Today, we're going to be diving into setting up and configuring Einstein Copilot. And then so off the bat, to me, all of this terminology can be quite confusing, even for someone who is involved with it on a day to day basis. So I can only imagine how confusing it could be for someone who is just coming into this trying to learn. So with that being said, let's start off with some terminology discussions. Let's start off start starting off with Einstein Copilot. Einstein Copilot is exactly as it sounds. It's Salesforce's version of the co of a copilot. A copilot being, in this instance, a uh, manager AI. That's the best way to think of Einstein Copilot, and that's very specifically how Salesforce has built out Einstein Copilot. Salesforce very specifically has an agentic uh, framework that they've built out where it's manager and agent. And then so in this instance, in your Salesforce org, you get instant, you get one manager, one co-pilot. <laughs> and so everyone in every org, once you enable Einstein Copilot, then in your org you have an Einstein Copilot. And then what does that enable for you within your org? That enables uh, a copilot that can take out of the box standard actions and that you can chat with within your org. Uh, and then you can chat with it at any time. Uh, and then go through and take actions. And uh, we can. what we're going to do today is configure some custom actions beyond the standard actions that you can do within it. So very first thing is uh, you need to have admin privileges. And we're going to go in the quick find. And we're just going to type in Copilot. And it's going to bring up a whole bunch of stuff here. And there's a few things that you're going to want activated in this whole entire process. So with each one of these, you're going to want to activate these. Uh, so like, for example, the first one that we're going to want to go to is Einstein Copilots. And then you can see here, in my instance, I have it switched to on and it's blue. And then I have an Einstein Copilot down here. So the very first time that you log in, this is going to be great over here and you won't have an Einstein Copilot. So we're going to want to switch it to on uh, and then we're going to want to configure our copilot. Um, and then in this instance, it's very straightforward to configure it. You just give it a name uh, and then essentially essential instructions as to what it will do. And then that's it as far as uh, enabling Einstein Copilot within our org. And then once this is enabled, then it will have access to what are called standard actions. So if we go here to uh, Einstein Copilot actions. These are the standard actions that are available to our Copilot out of the box. We have a draft or revised email, identify object by name, identify record by name, initiate return, query records, query records with aggregate or summarize record. And then so these are all the out of the box functions that Einstein Copilot can perform. But what if we want it to perform further actions than just these actions that we have listed here. <laughs> Within that, what we can do is we can set up a new copilot action. And then within this, uh, we can it, it, when we set up our copilot action, we have uh, three different types of an action that we can take. We can set it up as an apex trigger, as a flow, or a prompt template. The biggest reason why I think that organizations are going to want to adopt and will adopt, I think, uh, Salesforce AI and uh, Einstein Copilot is because of this right here, right? Uh, and then so what this is, if you're not familiar with it, especially with this one here, Apex Triggers, is deep into developer territory. But this is the very first time within Salesforce that you can set up an Apex Trigger without any sort of coding whatsoever. Uh, and then Flow, it's all through prompts. <laughs> and so all of this is through prompt template. So even if I pick Apex or Flow, we still are, it's still prompt engineering involved and not actual code, right? So we'll pick like Flow, for instance. And then we'll pick a reference action. And then in this instance, I'm just going to pick initiate return uh, because that's what, what uh, is default <laughs> in my org. But we could create any sort of reference action that we would want. Uh, and then we would just give it a name and an uh, API reference name like we would like any sort of other object or uh, field. 
And then uh, we want to give it, we want to give the uh, co-pilot. And so in this instance, again, remember we have that manager and agent structure, right? So then within this, we're giving our, first of all, instructions to the manager, and then we're giving instructions to the two agents. We have an input agent and an output agent, and then each one of these need individual instructions. And then this is all we're filling in within creating a copilot action. Right? So you'll spend a lot of time within this field here and then within this screen if you're building and you're configuring uh, custom actions or wanting to actually have your copilot do anything. And then from in this instance, we can have it do anything, right? And then we it's based off of inputs and outputs. And then uh, we just tell it the instructions and the instructions can be uh, anything. Uh, for example, what's the data type of, uh, of the input? Um, and then like uh, same thing for the outputs. Does the output contain specific fields or values? Uh, does it contain like a contact ID? You can put in any field uh, and then you input your instructions in natural and NLP, natural language, right? And that's the, the bottom line of all of this is moving further and further away from code and uh, from code and more towards clicks right clicks not code and uh, salesforce is like this is uh the most that i've seen like this is like literally uh it's two steps it's, uh, do you want to do an apex trigger or a flow or just a strand up prompt template but it might like in my experience with this, I mean, these two are more powerful, uh, and it's still co it still clicks, not code, <laughs> which one you pick, right? So don't be scared to go Apex uh, and then go here, uh, or you're going to run into issues <laughs> within. You can run into uh, issues uh, if you don't have it fully set up, but uh, within your organization. But uh, and then now we're running into uh, big issues here for some reason. Uh, and that's okay though, but so going through, uh, now we, I've essentially demonstrated, uh, how to create custom actions uh, within our Einstein co-pilots. Uh, uh, the, the major uh, reason is, is so when creating a uh, Einstein a co-pilot, uh, this is a big thing that I should have mentioned earlier and up front, when creating our custom actions and assigning actions, see our uh, co-pilot right now is active uh, in, in our uh, instance. Uh, if we want to make any sort of edits to our co-pilot, uh, including to the actions, we have to deactivate our co-pilot. And so that's the stuff that I forgot to do. Uh, and then so even for me as someone that's been going through this to see we would want to hit deactivate here. Uh, and then yes, we want to deactivate our co-pilot. And then we can go through and add our actions. So we can uh, add our custom action here. Uh, and then our same thing, flow, apex, etc. Right? So if I click apex here, it's going to work. Although it's not going to have any reference options, yeah. But so, uh, other than that, it should be good. Perfect. Go through uh, and then set up everything that I wanted. So I did miss that crucial step there of uh, deactivating uh, the uh, copilot. So I want to activate our copilot whenever I'm making any sort of edits to it. But you can see, like, this is like... Um, they make it similar to, uh, you know, it, working on the back end. Uh, if you're an admin of a Salesforce org, this would be the same thing as like setting up reports. Uh, pretty straight, you know, similar to uh, like a, a report builder uh, as far as what you can do. You have your actions here. Uh, and then from the drop down, you can just either view details or remove from Copilot. Uh, and then your action library is where you create your custom action. We can click in the plus. Uh, and then you have your options here of, again, Apex, Flow, or Prompt Template, no matter which one you pick. It's all clicks, not code. Uh, and then I'll just click through the initiate template uh, return again. And then again, it's based off of instructions, right? So then we have three sets of instructions, instructions to the manager and then instructions to the two actual individual agents that we're creating. So you can see we're creating a, and whenever you're dealing with uh, Salesforce bots, in this instance, and a lot of my experience, you're setting up the manager and the individual agents, right? And that's what you're doing on the back end. So keep that in mind that that framework is exactly what you're setting up. And then so when you see things like setting up three instructions and things like that, that's exactly what is going on there. 
And then so what does this get us? So once we have this custom action, we have this initiate return custom action that we created. Uh, and uh, that you went through and saw me uh, demonstrating there, but I actually created it before this video. <laughs> and then so uh, within this, I've created the essentially the in, we have our instructions here and the instructions are to uh, populate the input variable with an order record ID and then uh, for the input and then the output is the output indicates that the status of the return request, whether it's been initiated, processed or completed. Uh, and then so essentially what this does is this gives our uh, copilot in this instance ability to initiate returns. And then so if this were an external customer facing copilot in this instance, then we could have customers engage with it to initiate returns or even our internal CS department um, to initiate returns and go through. Right. And then so I think that's an excellent segue, a segue to the next video. I'll dive uh, specifically further into Einstein bots, which are another feature of uh, Einstein AI and Salesforce AI. So again, this terminology can get confusing, but Einstein bots are building out individual conversational agents. Uh, and then it's specifically as a part of the service cloud uh, and not related to sales cloud. So we'll dive more and further into Einstein bots in the next video, in the next lecture. Thank you very much.